Can you tell us a bit more about how you initially got the role in Echo? Do you want to uh, go first? Yeah, sure. Um, it was a call from Sydney, and we talked about the character and uh, what her plans were for the series. And well, as soon as, uh, as soon as she mentioned Marvel, as soon as my manager mentioned Marvel, I was like, I'm down. I'm so down. And then when I got on the call, I was even more excited. It just gave me a lot of excitement to be working on a on a show like this and the, the diversity, the indigenous, the ASL, everything. I knew I was in something special and I wanted to be a part of it. Yeah, I had seen the casting breakdown and had heard that the series Echo would be coming up. I had watched Hawkeye. I was a fan of the character Maya Lopez. I've also been such a fan of Marvel projects before, uh, but there was no script. Obviously it was like super top secret. It's Marvel after all. Um, and so I had put myself on tape for a self-tape audition and sent it in and I ended up getting a few callbacks and going down the line. But it was also chatting with Sydney Freeland, who is the uh, series director and, and executive producer of one of the directors. And she had explained what the what the relationship was with, with Bonnie. She couldn't get too much into the, the show at the time, but knowing Sydney and her work and having worked with her previously, I knew I wanted to be a part of it. And the fact that Echo also uh, features a deaf Native American superhero played by like the brilliant Alaco Cox, um, I was also just leaping at the opportunity. How does it feel to be part of the MCU? Great. It's awesome. It's, awesome. it's pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I feel like every actor, almost every actor, wants to be a part of a, a Marvel project. It's marked so many um, inspiring moments growing mm -hmm. up, with either with the comic books or, or watching the movies, to be able to, like, be in this world where there's where it's larger than life um, is I think everyone's dream but yeah. with this project project specifically and getting to kind of take it back down and ground it now that Echo's part of the Marvel Spotlight banner meaning that it's a standalone series that mm. it's a little bit more grounded and gritty and it, it doesn't involve necessarily like other universes it's it's more of a family drama I think just brings it back home and um, makes it a really really compelling story. Uh, watching Echo, it, it was actually my first time hearing like Native American terms like Yakoki. Uh, I yeah. I think I'm pronouncing it. Yeah. You got it. Um, <laughs> uh, why do you think the proper representation of Native Americans and the indigenous as, in, as seen in, in Echo is important? Because I think that for a long time we haven't had that. You know, it's just very recently we've been able to get people behind the camera. It hasn't been that long. And to, to have this come out and to be a part of this, it's a, I, I think it's a privilege and it's been a long time coming. Um, you know, if I was a kid, if I was a, a kid, I'd love to be, you know, all my little nephews and nieces and nieces love Marvel. So to be a part of this, you know, it, it feels pretty special. I think also in the U.S. for so long, indigenous people and our histories have been largely ignored. I think people think of Native Americans as something of the past and they think of really stereotypical imagery. And that's just not the case. Like we're modern day people with modern day stories. And I think showing the diversity of our experiences uh, is hugely important in welcoming people into our communities, but also showing um, how rich our cultures are and that we're mm -hmm. still here. Uh, my last question is, what were the biggest challenges you faced while filming? I think for me it was the ASL. That was, mm -hmm. I was a fish out of water on that. And we had, a, we had Doug and Alakwa, they were great, uh, very patient. Um, Doug Rill, sorry. Um, I think that's the big, that was the challenge. But you know, it, I didn't look at it as being negative. You, you know, I, I run, I'm a runner. <laughs> and so I look at it as a long-term marathon and I love running. And so I looked at it as being taken out of my element to learn something that I probably would have never, ever learned unless I got this opportunity. And when you get an opportunity like this, you got to very treasure it and know that you're just a part of something special. Yeah. I think the biggest challenge was also uh, learning sign language for me. It wasn't something that I had previously studied and the character Bonnie um, is very proficient and she's probably uh, the person who is most fluent in ASL and so that makes her closest with Maya when they're young. So in order to make that look real, it took a lot of um, 
a, a lot of effort, but also huge shout out to um, all of the the deaf folks on the film, the uh, producer Douglas Ridloff, who's also the ASL master, and he actually um, crafted each of the lines of dialogue and how it looked in ASL, uh, depending on people's uh, geographical location, depending on their family. And I know there was like Plains Indian Sign Language in, in the film or in the series. And so that was, uh, that was an element that was uh, really unique to, to this. And that could only have ever happened by getting filmmakers and creatives from those communities.